Minister Bungani, thanks very much for your time. I wanted to just start thanks. with your uh, financial results for this year. It's they, put, they put out um, against the still difficult uh, macroeconomic environment, both on the oil price as well as the volatility around the currency. Those affected your results this year. Thanks, Terence. Uh, yes, it was a mixed picture. And then if you look at the effect of the currency, it had the effect of uh, reducing our, uh, our profits by, by 38%. But uh, if you look at the effect of the oil price, it had the effect of doing the opposite of increasing our earnings by, by 30%. So there is a tremendous uh, volatility being caused by both uh, the exchange rate and the dollar price. But we can deal with that uh, later on if you have further questions. And, the, and in, to respond to that, you're continuing with this quite aggressive uh, capital scrubbing as well as taking costs out of your yes. cost base. And that continues. You, you hit some milestones this year on both, yes. on both areas. Yes. Uh, years ago in 2013, to be specific, we started with the business performance enhancement program. And then initially the target was that we would uh, have three billion in sustainable cash removed from the, from the business. Uh, over the years, we have uh, increased that. So we were planning to, to have 5.4 billion rand of, of course of our cost base forever in a day uh, in FY18, uh, getting into FY19. But we have, we've managed to achieve that a year ahead of the program. So we are closing, doing a close out of that program, but going ahead, we want to continue with the continuous improvement program so that we continue to, to benchmark and uh, outperform our, our competitors so that we, we can be competitive as, as a business. And part of that is a fairly detailed scrubbing of your capital program, both in it, North America and in South, Southern Africa. It, it, in, indeed. Aligned with, with that, uh, with the oil uh, coming down, oil price coming down in uh, November 2014, we had a relook at our global portfolio of, of, of projects. The most high profile uh, of, of those impacted was the USGTR because the, the economics simply did not work and there was no way you were going to spend at least $14, 14 billion dollars uh, on, on, on a project when the economics were, were adverse. So we have, uh, we've, we've, we've put that aside and then we optimize the, the pace of all our projects because we're doing, going to do a lot of exploration also uh, uh, around the world and there were quite a few uh, gas to, to liquid plants around the world being considered. So obviously we've put some, some breaks on that. We however continued with our two anchor projects which is the Lake Charles chemical project in, in the USA for 11 billion US dollars. The commissioning starts in the mid next year. And then uh, we, we, with the production sharing agreement in Mozambique, which, which is $1.3 billion, uh, the first phase. The second phase is uh, $1.7 billion. We are continuing uh, with those. And in South Africa here, we continued with the uh, FT Web, the WAX project, uh, which we have commissioned uh, uh, already. And uh, we, this fi current financial year, we produced 92,000 kilotons of, of hard works. So we, we, we are continuing with all our, uh, our, our, our major, major projects. And those are the issues that you can control, but there's mm. also issues that you can't control around the oil price and around the RAM mm. dollar volatility. Mm. And there you've put in quite assertive hedging programs. Yes. We, we've been uh, fairly successful in our, in our hedging program because we wanted to create certainty and uh, strengthen our, our balance sheet, uh, especially in this financial year 2018, which is our, key, our peak funding year in terms of the LCCP, we'll spend $2.8 billion US dollars on, 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 on the LCCP. But uh, if you look at what we have done in terms of our hedging program, we have hedged about 70% of our exposures in, in terms of currency at a flow of around uh, 13, 13 rand uh, 46 uh, cents, which is uh, well positioned given where the spot is, but that's not our objective. So there is a window th there where we, we hedge. And then if you look at the oil price, we have hedged net of, uh, of the premiums we pay at uh, 49 
uh, dollars per barrel. What it means though with the hedges for, for oil is because we paid a premium, if for whatever reason the oil price balloons back to 60, uh, we will still get $60 per barrel. We're, we are not going to be stuck with the $49 per barrel. So we've done fairly well in terms of our, of our hedging program. And then coming out of the lower for longer oil price environment, mm -hmm. with your response plan, mm -hmm. you're now saying that you can be cash generative as a business at $40 a barrel. What does that mean? Uh, what it means is if we look at our portfolio of, 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 of businesses, uh, what oil price do we, do we need to, to, to break even? So you look at both our chemicals uh, portfolio and our, our oil portfolio, but specifically if I can look at our, at our oil portfolio, if you look at our secondary sin fuels, for instance, if you exclude intergroup uh, uh, profits, it, it's able to, to break even at, at, at $35 per barrel, and that's our biggest uh, production uh, facility. And then if you then look at uh, Oryx in, 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 in Qatar, uh, it's able to uh, have a break-even at just over $40, $40 per barrel. So we're, so, so we're well positioned in terms of uh, cost of, of production because of all these uh, cost programs which we have done. But uh, I need to emphasize that uh, the integrity of the plants was absolutely paramount to make sure that uh, you do not skimp on, on, on maintenance because you get found out mm -hmm. in, in the future. But uh, over the years, the, the stability of our operations and the production records uh, we keep achieving is testament to the fact that the, we, the integrity of the plants are, are being maintained. But the self-reflection continues and you've entered a period of asset review, which mm -hmm. you're yes. saying could either lead to a growth in certain assets, but it could mm -hmm. also lead to a shutting and a disposal of certain assets. Yes. I think it's important to be clear in terms of the asset review what it is and what it is not. Uh, what it is is to how we can look at our portfolio of assets in order to optimize it so that we get a, a higher sustainable return. Because one of the biggest criticisms we get from the market is that our capital allocation could be much better. So we are responding not only to what the analysts are saying, but what also our shareholders are saying and what we also believe that we could do much better in that. So we are looking at all our portfolio of assets to say which ones are hold, which ones can be improved, which ones we need to, uh, to, to, to exit. But at the same time, uh, what is it not? What it is not is a fire sale because fortunately, uh, we, 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 liquidity is not our problem because uh, if you look at cash in the bank uh, and you look at the facilities we, we have, we have liquidity of just over 80 billion rand. So we, 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 we don't have an issue there. So we need to optimize uh, our returns, but we're not going to have a fire sale. But you're also looking beyond the, the immediate portfolio and looking at your long-term strategy. I know that you're going to be announcing some things later in the year yes. around November. Yeah. But what are the macroeconomic trends that are, that are likely to influence that long-term strategy? Yeah. There are, there are few dynamics uh, on the chemical side and on, on the energy side. If I can start with the, with, with the energy side, there, there is a, a gradual move away from diesel, especially in Europe. But there is, there is also an issue of uh, energy efficiency, and there is also an issue of uh, electric vehicles, which uh, you read a lot about in the press, but uh, context is rather important. That currently is 0.6% of the global fit of, of vehicles. I'm not trivializing the future impact, but uh, just like any technology, uh, it's always uh, overestimated in the early years, and uh, underestimated in the long term. So with electric vehicles, our view <coughs> and energy efficiency, our view is, is that uh, we are likely to see a, a squeeze in terms of refining margins. So we'll be indirectly affected as, as a SASO. But as far as our volumes are concerned, uh, I stand to be corrected, but I don't see a major dramatic takeoff in electric vehicles in South Africa because you need the infrastructure and the, the, the psyche of the driver and so on. And then on, on the chemical side, uh, we, the chemical uh, the growth is linked to the global GDP, which we estimate to be between 3.5% and 4%, and we're bullish in that and will continue to, to grow that, that portfolio. 
So over time, we expect to, uh, to, to see the earnings being 50% from South Africa and 50% from our, 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 our global operations. And the mix between earnings between chemicals and fuels? In, in terms of uh, chemicals, you might see chemicals being up to 60% of our earnings. And then the shock of this uh, period was really this tax assessment that came through. We've been in a long-running uh, dispute with SARS around uh, certain issues around Sassel oil. Yeah. But there's been fairly aggressive uh, moves from SARS, uh, both yeah. for an immediate uh, assessment of 1.2 billion rand, which you've made provision for, yeah. and a, a possible bigger implication of over 11 billion rand. Yeah. How, how confident are you that this will be resolved? Uh, we, we are very confident that it will be resolved. Maybe f first let me set context as to what it is. In terms of the 1.2 billion rand, it's in relation to Sasol oil, as you correctly point out, and uh, our offshore o cap uh, procuring arm, which is a Sasol International Services Company. So just like any other oil company, uh, because I've worked for a few in my lifetime, they source crude uh, from various sources and they do trading London. London is one of the energy hubs, the other one is, the, is, is, is in Houston, and then they do shipping as, as well on, on behalf of the operating entities. So that's what we're doing. So, but the, the 1.2 is based on the argument by SARS or substance over form. It's obviously going to the Supreme Court, so I do not want to, to preempt the outcome of that, but our view was that based on the outcome of, of, of that court case, it should then set the basis uh, for how the future years are, are then being assessed. Uh, however, uh, SARS has taken the view that for 2013 and 2014, uh, they will uh, tax 100% of our, of our earnings, uh, however, and not allow any deductions in terms of that. That's why it, re it is results in this rather large uh, assessment, which we are obviously contesting. And uh, us and our lawyers have uh, got a very strong view that uh, we, we, we are likely to, to prevail in that. But uh, uh, that aside, we, we were working constructively with SARS uh, very professionally to make sure that we, we get to an amicable outcome which sets clarity on, on the rules. Because uh, uh, th th these matters are, are very subject to interpretation. So mm -hmm. clarity is, is, is good not only for us but for SARS as well and for the greater industry. And finally, you're into the 2018 financial year. How mm. do you see this unfolding? The 2018 uh, financial year is, is quite pivotal for us because we start commissioning the electoral uh, chemical uh, project. But uh, we expect the, the fuels environment to take strain in South Africa. So we're expecting 60 uh, million uh, barrels of, of, of fuel cells. And then uh, in terms of uh, chemicals, we expect to see growth between 3 and 5%. So it's, 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 it's mixed, but uh, we will uh, manage it and uh, approach it with vigor. Thanks very much and good luck for the year. Thanks a lot. Thank you.